And I'm joined by Nick Watts and Graham Modway for a look at the Kipco 2000 Giddies. Now, an absolute head scratcher in terms of an anti-post perspective here, gentlemen, isn't it? All the value seems to be sucked out of it, in my opinion. You've got the, the big, the mega stars at the top of the market, Nick. Now, I'm going to throw it down to you. Dawn approach at 11 to 8, Toronado at 3 to 1. Which way are you going? I'd rather be with Toronado at 3 to 1. I, I thought he looked very impressive at Newmarket last week. Um, and I'm interested as also that Dawn approached as a two year old, although he's unbeaten. The horse that managed to get closest to him was Olympic Glory in the Coventry Stakes, obviously trained by Richard Hannon as well. So Hannon has quite a good line on Dawn approach and what his capabilities are. I think within the yard, I mean, this is only a hunch, I don't know if it's true or not, but as much as they rate Olympic Glory, and he is a very good horse, um, I think they rate Toronado better. Or be you know, they think he's the superior animal out of the two. Um, I don't think you can read anything into the fact that Olympic Glory is going to France and this one's going here. I think they just wanted to split them up. Um, Olympic Glory wants a flatter track, apparently, which is when he's won in France before. But Toronado, you know, very impressive as a two-year-old. And he's just come back and showed that he's not only is he trained on, but, you know, he absolutely thrashed some decent rivals there. The Havana Gold is stable, mate. And Dun Donnell, who's, who's no mug as a two-year-old either. And I was just really taken with the way he did it. I thought visually he looked superb. Um, he comes into the race on an absolute high. And while it's not essential to have a prep race uh, for the 2000 Guineas, we've seen plenty of them come back on and win it on their seasonal debuts. Um, Dawn approached just, you know, he, he, his dad, New Approach, didn't win this race, did he? He was just beaten by uh, Henry the Navigator a few years ago. And I've got a feeling he might just come up a bit short as well. I think he's going to need an exceptional performance from Dawn Approach to beat Toronado. He may be exceptional, but, but I'm going to go with the Hannon horse this time. And Graham, you disagree? I think Dawn Approach is an, is an absolute certainty. Yeah, I think he really is. He's got absolute rock solid form, hasn't he? He's, he's got a bunch of ones by his name last season. He was by far the best two year old. Indeed. Well, I actually saw Toronado in the flesh a couple of times last season. I, and I heard all these reports um, before the race that he was an absolute flying machine. But um, I watched him a couple of times, I wasn't blown away with him. Um, and he, he, albeit he did win nicely first time out in the Craven Stakes. Um, You'd have to be impressed with that visually. Yeah. Come well, on, Gerard, even you, you must have been impressed I was, with the Craven run, surely. <laughs> Before the race, I thought, this is such a poor race, this Craven race. I thought, if Toronado doesn't bolt up, I'll be absolutely surprised. And Toronado did bolt up. Um, and I don't think I learned a hell of a lot more about him than I already knew. I know a lot of people have been blown away by it, but I certainly wasn't in that camp. Um, and having seen him last season, I also thought he was distinctly average. But I expect Dawn Approach to, to blow him away. Um, and then who knows where they go from there with Dawn Approach. I don't, don't get me wrong, I don't think he's the next Frank or anything like that, but I do think he's head and shoulders above this opposition. It does look a moderate crop, uh, I would say, Nick, because uh, you know, a general overview. And then very quickly, if, is there anything from the remaining possible candidates you could see making the fray? Well, just to go through and mention a couple quickly. I mean, Gerard was talking about form a, a minute ago. Well, Mars has just come from an all-weather maiden at Dundalk. And surely it'd be Aidan O'Brien's best training feat ever to get him from a maiden at Dundalk to suddenly come and win the 2,000 guineas. 9-1 to one looks crackers on I, the face of it. I, I know there's been good money for it, but he'd have to be some kind of genius, Aidan O'Brien, I think, not to have a prep run and go straight from that Dundalk win to this. He is a bit Could, of a genius, don't he? He is a genius, but I think that would surpass all, all, all his previous... Uh, <laughs> No, it's, all, it's, it's all hype, isn't it? It Mars, is all hype, and if he's got four runners in the guineas that he's under consideration, it probably means he hasn't got one. The one thing you can say about Mars, though, is that he was all hype before the race uh, for the derby, and, and he won uh, that maiden nicely, and then you didn't see him again uh, the rest of the season. But despite the fact you didn't see him again the rest of the season, we haven't seen him yet, and he's only run once. He's still... So high up in the markets for both the classics, both the, the guineas. Well, it's, it's, it's your hype, and there, the Gerard. Derby. It's your hype. They must rate him. to your form three. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you like form. You're oh, a form I man. do. I am a form man, but they must rate him, mustn't they? They must rate Mars. I mean, I, I'm not saying I would go and back him at nine to one. I mean, you know, he's he, he's got absolute bundles to find. But when you look at the markets and you see this horse that's run once in a Dundalk maiden, and it's Almost favourite for the Derby and second favourite for the Guineas. There must be some ability there, surely. But we're not backing him, basically. Oh, no. Right, so so <laughs> Graham, dawn approach for you. Nick, you're the Toronado man. 
Yeah, there's no big prices around and there the rest, to get the rest excited come about. It's, it's, yeah. it's one of the two, and I'm in Toronado. The rest come home in a different postcode. I'd probably much, yeah. Be in, be in agreement somewhere between the I'll two. I'd be but very <laughs> disappointed if we don't have the winner between myself and Watsy anyway. Put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit this one out. I think it's between the top two. I can't work out which one. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all again soon.